Before tackling the mathematical underpinning of probability in a Bayesian setting, I will first give a short intro to elements of logic and set theory. Won't that be fun? Uh, the correct answer is no. Uh, I have no clue how to make this subject come alive in a wonderful new way, so I'm simply uh, going to give a crash course in the definitions. This is not the core of the series. Um, for the later part of the series, I will use terminology from logic and set theory, but it will be a pretty basic concept, so it uh, might not be strictly necessary to have seen and remember the stuff in this clip. I do feel that I need to cover this first, since the probabilities in the setting I'm looking for are uh, assigned to logical statements or sets. If you've seen my first uh, series, uh, my first clip rather, in this series, you might be uh, surprised that I'm now trying to describe logic. Of after all, didn't I kind of criticize the topic? Well, to be clear, I said that deductive logic isn't sufficient for rational reasoning, but it certainly is necessary. If a system of reasoning under uncertainty in any way conflicted with logic in cases where logic gave results, that would simply destroy that system of reasoning and uncertainty. I'll avoid uh, advanced topics and needless advanced terminology. Uh, for instance, I will call the OR operation the OR operation rather than disjunction. And my apologies to those already in the logic game. Uh, since the different statements that we want the probabilities of often can be seen as representing different sets of outcomes, a few set theoretical definitions will also be shown. If you remember a little about these concepts from school, this clip may be a needless repetition for you. Since uh, I'll uh, jump pretty much arbitrarily between uh, probabilities on statements and probabilities on sets, depending what, on what I think illustrates the problem best, I'll try to deal with the logical concepts and set concepts uh, that can be said to correspond. First off, a little bit about sets. Uh, sets are collections of separate elements. Uh, Examples of sets are the set of prime numbers, the set of real numbers between 0 and 1, or the set of items on your table. Here's one set I'll use, which is the different outcomes of uh, throwing a die which can be anything from one eye to six eyes. Uh, Venn diagrams are often used to illustrate uh, set concepts. Uh, the whole uh, light blue rectangle illustrates all possible elements, while the circle represents a smaller set containing a smaller sets of elements. Uh, first off on the definition list is logical negation. If you have a statement A, you can make a negation, not A. If A is true, then not A is false, and vice versa. The similar set the theoretical concept is called the complement. If A is a set, the complement of A is the set of elements that are not contained in A. So, for instance, if A is the set of dice outcomes smaller than 4, the complement is the uh, dice outcomes larger than or equal to 4. And this video belongs to the complement of fun YouTube videos. Next up is the AND operation. The statement A and B is true uh, means that both A and B are true. true. Uh, if at least one of them are false, A and B is false. The corresponding set concept is called the intersection. The intersection of set A and B is the set of elements where each element is both a member of A and B. Uh, for instance, the intersection between even outcomes of a die and outcomes larger than 3 is the set containing 4 and 6. Often in probability theory, a list of AND statements will be written simply as the statements divided by comma as in, this, um, as in an ordinary list. Then there's the OR operation. Uh, the statement A or B is true as long as A is true, or B is true, or both. The corresponding set concept is the union, uh, which contains elements found in at least one of the sets in question, in set A or in set B, if you will. 
The union of even dice outcomes and outcomes larger than 3 are the outcomes 2, 4, 5 and 6. We now already have enough to get by, but it will get uh, a little easier if we include the logical operation called implies. A implies B uh, is true as long as either A is not true or A and B are both true. So uh, A can't be true and uh, B false at the same time. This can also be written as not B implies not A. Uh, the set concept that corresponds to this is the concept that set A is contained in B. If being an element in A implies being an element in B, then A is contained in B. If the implication also runs the other way, we have logical or set theoretical equivalence. The intersection of uh, die outcomes that are odd and larger than 5 is the so-called empty set, which contains no elements. If two sets are like that, they are called disjoint. The logical concept is called mutually exclusive and can be written as A implies not B or alternately B implies not A. If you have a set of logical propositions that are so that any two different propositions are mutually exclusive but one of them has to be true, that's called a partition. And a partition can be very useful in uh, probability theory. A very simple partition are the two propositions A and not A, since those uh, are mutually exclusive and one of them has to be true. Similarly, if uh, A1 union A2 union and so forth up to AK is the set of all elements and uh, the A sets are disjoint, We've got a partition consisting of sets. For the die, the set of sets A is equal to 1, 2, 3, B is equal to 4, 5, C is equal to 6, is a partition. Of course, all six uh, separate outcomes would also be a partition. Note that the mutually exclusive does not mean yield different observations always. For instance, if you turn around and observe a vase uh, crashing vertically to the ground, the proposition the vase started falling at the, from a height of one meter above the spot of impact and the vase started falling from a height of two meters above the spot of impact yields the same observation but are mutually exclusive. If we go back to set theory, a collection of sets will not necessarily be disjoint. However, we can make such a collection. For instance, if we have three sets, A, B and C, we can start off with A. Then add to our collection the set of elements in B which is not in A, B, B intersection with A complement, and at last the uh, set of elements in C which is not found in A or B, C intersection with not A or B. For instance, the set of even dice outcomes and the set of dice outcomes larger than 3 can be made disjoint by instead dividing into even numbers and odd numbers larger than 3, which is 5. If we're discussing evolution versus the flying spaghetti monster as the explanation for the diversity of life on Earth, we can make a collection, namely evolution is the sole explanation versus the flying spaghetti monster is part of the explanation. Right, I may not have managed to win your hearts and minds in this video, but uh, next up is probability theory. Mm, probability theory.